guys, Omar here. And in the last video, we were talking about the 50 millimeter El Cheapo 1.8. I'll link that video up below how great it was on the Nikon Z6 II. And today, you know, I went out street, I did street photography with this 50 millimeter. And right before I left the house, I was staring at, that's beautiful, isn't it? Great heft to this lens. I, I always find it funny, these old G lenses, because the mount, the FX mount on the DSL, I don't even know what it's called, the FX mount. Look how small <laughs> the little mount is on the back. Now, I picked up the 105 millimeter 1.4 for portraits. And for portraits, it's like, ugh, it's perfect for me because I used to love the 135, uh, but I was a little bit too far back from my subjects with 135. And 85 to me, I usually am a 50 millimeter shooter for my portraits and I like 85, but I, I think I became a little bored with 85 millimeter. And so I love that Nikon makes a 105. It's like the best of everything. It's, it's, it's beyond 85, but less than 130. <laughs> uh, that was stupid. No, I think it's the Goldilocks lens for me. It gives me what I'm looking for for portraits, the separation from the background, the beautiful bokeh blur with this lens is great. It's incredibly sharp, it has great character. And I like lenses that have great character and this is one of them. Doing like traditional street photography of people is hard on the street with a 105 because if you're shooting people that are very close to you, what are you gonna get, their nostrils? <laughs> you know, so, this is better for being across the street, setting up like a, you know, uh, looking for your composition across the street and letting, you know, interesting characters or people whose clothes match sort of fall into the scene. So I think that this lens was perfect for that. And so this was like an across the street sort of shooter for me. The only thing with that is you're sort of, you're not getting the full potential of the 1.4, that beautiful filmic compression. And so you really want to shoot with a lot of distance in the background if you're using an 85 for street or if you're using a 105 or a 135. I think that it's cool if you have a lot of background. So let's put it here on the Nikon Z6 II so you can see how ridiculous it looks. <laughs> Look at this little mount. Look at this little mount right here. Okay. Ooh, ooh, for those of you that like cameras. Here's the Nikon Z6 II with the 105 1.4. You know, when I was walking around, I kind of was just holding the lens more than the camera, and I forgot a wrist strap or neck strap. So it was like, I was kind of just holding the camera like this. But it's really well balanced on the Z. I think if you had a battery grip, it would be a little bit better uh, to hold. It's definitely top heavy. By the way, Nikon makes a new 105 2.8, but it's not a 1.4. It is a macro lens though, so if you like to do macro photography, that is a good pickup for you. Uh, so street photos, how was it to take street photos? So for the autofocus settings, I used a zone for the most part in continuous. And uh, that was great at picking up autofocus, especially of bikers or people moving. It definitely is too tight if people are like 10 meters away from you, 30 feet. Um, you know, sometimes you can't get your full composition because the person's out of the composition. There was this super interesting biker guy on the street with a dog and um, the picture was ruined because he was out of the frame. So um, there is something to be said about street photographers that you zoom lenses that can kind of, you know, pick up a lot of different scenes and and um, with the zoom. Now I will mention something that happens sometimes with the FTZ adapter. I forgot to mention this in my last video, the 50 millimeter 1.8 video, is that sometimes a couple of times the the lens wouldn't wake up like the FTZ adapter wouldn't if I'm hitting my back button focus it just doesn't do anything no error code nothing like that but sometimes it won't focus um, 
with the FTZ adapter, it won't immediately focus, but it's very rare. I think it's like one out of maybe 70 times I've used the FTZ adapter. Um, so just keep that in mind. That's happened to me a couple of times. And let me know in the comments if that has happened to you. Um, I was trying to do a little minimum focus test with the 50 millimeter 1.8 on my hand. And with the uh, 50 millimeter S, it just, it totally snapped onto my hand. And this one didn't want to, even though I knew I was at the minimum focus distance. And then I had to like wake it up and then it would focus. So that's something to think about if you're adapting your old Nikon lenses. 35 millimeter, 50 millimeter are very popular street lenses, but the images you get from an 85 or a 105 or 135 are really, really wonderful. And it's, I think it's great if you went out with a longer lens and tried to get images that, are, that have a lot of depth to them. And, um, you know, especially for those of you that are a little shyer in your street photography, being across the street, sort of like hiding between two cars and wearing leaves and stuff, it might be easier for you to do street photography across the street. Again, pick a composition that looks interesting and then let people go into your composition is a good way to start. Um, when I'm shooting architecture, I can zone in on, you know, interesting lines instead of getting a whole building or, or you know, some sort of facade or something. I could just get a few windows. I like getting a mix between two different buildings, sometimes modern versus, you know, um, ancient. <laughs> that's one of my favorite ways to shoot this. And if you are a black and white shooter, you know, that's a great way to shoot architecture is just look for lines and compositions in the buildings. So that one thir this 135 is excellent for that. If you're not really trying to shoot or photograph people, that makes you a little bit nervous. You're more looking for compositions. You know, the 135 removes all the surrounding environment and lets you pinpoint on specific things. So that's another cool way to shoot the 105. All right, now just for portraits, the 105 can be used for street photography. I think we answered that in this video. All right, I'll see you guys next time, bye. Turning off.